everyone, Alex with Be Made Up here. It's been a while, I've been pretty busy at work, but today you're in for a treat. I'm gonna teach you how to create groups in Reddit MEP. We're gonna start by providing some sanitary drainage to the lavatory, and we're gonna provide some domestic water to that lavatory. I'm gonna show you how to create the group in Revit, the properties of the groups in, in Revit, how they behave, uh, copying and modifying uh, groups in Revit, how to edit a group in Revit, very important. So I'll see you in Revit. So let's pipe a lavatory. So I'm doing create similar. I'm gonna drop it here. If you haven't seen how to create a plumbing uh, stack, I recommend you go ahead and check it out. The link's gonna be in the description, but I can also show you here. So I'm gonna change my work set to sanitary drainage. So I'm coming out with my tailpiece. Make sure you have your correct pipe type set up. Then I'm turning. And I'm gonna have a plumbing stack here. It's gonna be a two inch. So I'll just change it. And I'm gonna change my elbow into a P-trap. I'm gonna extend into here. And now I'm gonna copy this pipe up and I'm gonna make it a vent. So I need to change not only my pipe type but i also want to change my system actually let me just connect it to the fitting probably want to add a clean out down here So there's my clean out. Let's probably move it up a little bit. Something like that. That's a pretty decent stack. I also wanna take some uh, hot water and cold water out of here. So let's change our pipe type. Let's make sure we're in the correct system. Let's say our ceiling is at eight feet, so I'm gonna go out at nine and I'm gonna do the same for cold water. I probably wanna add a couple of shock absorbers. Well, for that, I'm gonna take a couple of rising nipples here. I'm gonna, let's say 10 feet, apply. Do the same for cold water and say 10 feet, apply. Now I'll go to my 3D view. I can take those two out and now I bring in my shock absorbers. So I have it right here. It's a small pipe for a small lavatory. So one here and one here. So this is a pretty decently piped lavatory. And if you have a hundred lavatories, you wouldn't want to do this a hundred times. In order to avoid that, we have a couple of options. One is group and one is assembly. So it's always a good idea to have a 3D view open as a monitoring view. And that way, if you select all your elements here, you make sure that you're selecting what you want. And sometimes you can select from the 3D view and all that. So now I'm gonna make my selection and I'm gonna click here on group, create group. And I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it, it's a PLV for lavatory. And that one has cold water, hot water, and sanitary and vent. Click okay. And just like that, we have created a group. Notice that when I created the group, it, it Revit didn't give me an option to assign a category. It just created a group. And now if I click on the group, 
I don't have too many options here under the properties palette, just the level associated and the works in which I created it. And the name of the group gets displayed up here, and you'll be able to find the group under Groups, Model Group, and then it, it shows you. So I could take this uh, group here and I could ungroup it, which would be the equivalent of a burst or an exploding AutoCAD, okay, or I could edit the group. So if I were to edit my group, I'm clicking on it. If I click here, one of the advantages of having a 3D view open is that you can edit the group from the 3D view. So let's say this one in particular, I want it for level one and it has a clean out. But for the upper levels, I'm not required by code to have a clean out right there. Let's say I want to remove it. You could edit that. And now that I have my group created, I think I'm going to copy it somewhere a little bit out of the way because this is a pretty congested area. So now I have it all the way up here. Notice that I can copy that group as many times as I want. Right, I can even unconstrain this and copy it here. And notice that I, I only keep one group. If I go under, under groups, model groups, I only have one. So it's the same element, just repeated several times. It's the equivalent to, to blocks in AutoCAD, although AutoCAD also had groups. So what happens if you want to modify a group, right? You can click here and go to edit group. And then let's say I want to remove this clean up, right? So I delete that. And then I can click on finish. And then perfect. This one got rid of the cleanout. But now every instance of that group got the cleanout removed. So that's probably not what I want to do unless I want to make a, a, a general change. But what you may want to do is take this guy here and then ungroup it. Right. And now this became individual elements again. And then you could select all of them. Right, this will be this one here. So you have all of them selected and then you can create a new group. Um, and then you could call it, it could be PLV cold water, hot water, sanitary and vent. But this would be for upper levels. And the other one could be for level one only, right? So I'm going to click OK. And this is my new group right here. And then to this guy, this is actually the one that I want to modify and get rid of this, right? And now you have this one for the upper floors and then this one for level one. Now, one thing you want to be careful with groups is that uh, let me let me ungroup this, right? If I click on this pipe here, this is a hot water pipe that should be reading cold water fixture units out of this lavatory. If you click on this lavatory and you go to edit type, you'll see that it has for hot water fixture units, it has 1.5. And now let's see, we get a reading. There you go, one drainage fixture unit. So. I have my reading in sanitary, cold water, and hot water. So now it would be a good time to redefine that group, right? So let me select the whole thing again. Let's make sure that we're selecting what we want. And before that, I'm going to copy this name so I don't have to type it again. So let's create that group. And let's try to let's try to give it the same name that we had before and see what happens. Oh, the name entered is already in use, enter a unique name. So one thing we could do is we could probably call this a level one. And then we can select the old guy, select all instances in the entire project. And this all guys, we can just get rid of, delete. And now we can even delete this, um, this group definition. And now for this one, level one, 
I guess we can also notice that we cannot delete it because there's a group in existence, a couple of groups in existence. It would be this one here and well, this one we, we ungrouped. So if we click on here, we should be able to delete the, the upper levels. There you go, delete. See? And now what we can do is we take our, our, our this guy we can delete as well. And then we can take this one, we can copy it over, and then we can ungroup this one, and we can remove this, clean out, and then we make our new selection, and we create our new group, and this one has a name that is for the upper levels. There you go. Now we have one for level one and one for the levels above. And now let's let's try something out. If you copy this up and then you ungroup, you still have that reading. So that uh, on hosting from the wall was probably not a good idea. Um, I just try to do that because hosted families are a pain and they don't let you move away from a wall. But that's one of the advantages of groups. Once you group things, you can move them at your at your will, you know, to wherever you want, and nothing breaks. Whereas if you try to do that uh, with, let's say, with this, typically it, it would give you some trouble. And anyone who has designed plumbing knows exactly what I'm talking about. See, if I try to move this, I would have to click here, take the constraint out, and then it gives me a bunch of errors. So that doesn't happen when you group things. You can just move them without a problem, and you get no errors. Now, another thing that is very important to note is that if you want to, let's say I'm creating similar, right? And I have this pipe, and I want it to connect to a group, right? You take your pipe, and you connect it like this, it does make the connection, but notice that it, you see this little thing here? That's a coupling. So if I click here, oh, I guess it got fixed in 2019. That's great news. Uh, for a while, you couldn't connect and keep the reading out of a group, but um, I guess that changed now in 2019, so that's excellent news. Good job, Autodesk. Let's see. There you go, 1.5, nice. So that's how you can utilize groups for uh, elements that are being repeated several times. You can also do that for a, for a full restroom if you want, or even if you feel ambitious, you could do something like this multiple restroom make it a group, and then copy it to the third floor and so on. Just be very careful with what you're doing. For now, I'm just going to delete all these. So I want my project to be clean. And keep in mind that now that we created them, let me just rename this to be consistent. Now that you created these groups, you can simply drag and drop and then place it wherever you want. So you have it available for the future. This is one, and this is the other one. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.